Moving on to the last Olympian. Watch the intro, I'm gonna fix this. probably because I went to a day camp uh, when I was reading this over a summer and water damage, field trips, sports days, going around the entire area. It came with me everywhere, it did not leave my hands. I don't think I ever put it in my backpack. They actually had to tell me to put it in my backpack otherwise I would just keep reading it. Like, really, that's what happened. But the last Olympian. Now, I gotta say, this is a really, really awesome way. So I agree with Rick Riordan. He should not be doing epilogues for this. And I love that he doesn't do an epilogue for this. But what do I love about this book? So obviously, it's my number three spot. So I do have a few problems with it, but I still love it so much. Obviously, I like tore the cover off. So, The Last Olympian, where to start with this one? It's the final one. It's the build-up. And now, I know I haven't talked about the prophecies too much. I am going to talk about the prophecies eventually when we get there. But, okay, for an ending, like, this is what we've been building up to the entire time. This is Cronus's like, end-all plan. This is the plan that he's like, it's gonna work, and it does almost work. Except for Luke, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But The Last Olympian, okay. I love it. It has, this is where I really started, I started loving Nico in the last one. And this, I continue to love Nico more. This is the book that really, like, gives that whole love triangle thing new meaning. And, you know, Nico is a very small part of it, but of course I'm gonna mention him. He's my favorite character, why wouldn't I mention him? I love when he just comes out of nowhere with all of the, with like the army and is just like, hey we late and all the monsters are like peeling away from him. As I said before, he's like a monster repellent. <laughs> why doesn't he go on more quests? Seriously, like, why is it, it when they're picking people for quests, they're not like, I'm gonna take you, you, and Nico. And Nico's like, why are you taking me? And they're just like, well you like repel monsters, come on. You reek of death, you're gonna repel monsters. Why not make the quest easier that way? It's mean, but it's partly true, and he probably wouldn't care. <laughs> but anyway, back to The Last Olympian. I just really like that. I really like that that happened, and I like that Nico had to bond with his father. And by the way, before we move away from death entirely, can we just give Hades a nice, slow clap? Seriously. Seriously, I know he's like the bad guy in that scene when they go down right before the sticks, okay? Because he like imprisons Percy and such. I know he's the bad guy and such, but seriously, give, give him a good slow clap. Because guess what? He actually did some parenting! Yeah, a god did some parenting, so he gets a slow clap for that one. That whole go to your room thing. I was just sitting there going, yeah, Hades, I know you're supposed to be the bad guy, but dude, Good job for doing some parenting around here. Seriously, like, none of the other gods do that much of the parenting, like, the actual, that parenting side, beyond the praising parenting thing. Occasionally a lesson here and there, but it's never, like, you know, the hardcore go to your room, think about what you've done parenting thing, and I love that Hades and Nico has that relationship. That is awesome. But besides that, okay, this whole book, Okay, the prophecy. I gotta say, it, this whole book centers around the prophecy. I haven't been talking about the prophecy, so I'm gonna do a prophecies episode all on its own. 
but the prophecy really drives this, and I love that. And we've been building up to this prophecy for four books. It should drive the plot. It should not just be that. And I love that it's not Percy, actually. Yeah, I actually like that plot point, that it is not Percy. See, that's a twist. We are all wondering, we were all paranoid that Percy was going to have to die. And I was expecting the, the twist to come with the whole cursed blade scenario. Because, you know, that could be a metaphor or something. But no, it was literally a cursed blade. And Luke became the saddest character in this series, this pre the prequel series. Nico's the saddest character in the next series. But this series, Luke became the saddest character because he had to do that whole Egyptian thing, going back and forth with Cronus and sharing a body. Seriously, did he, like, run out of plans and... I don't know, they were talking about how there was, like, the River of Chaos in Tartarus. Is Tartarus part of the Daunt? Maybe? I don't know, maybe while he was down there, he was talking to Apophis and was just like, Oh, hey, you guys have that Egyptian thing, right? Yeah, how does that work? Could you just tell me how that works? Yeah, I mean, and you don't plan to, like, take over and come back. Really? It's just, oh, that's so simple. I'm gonna do that. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he did that. Because, seriously. That's like an Egyptian, it's an Egyptian thing. I know that the Egyptian myths and the Greek myths have crossed before in a book, as I said, but seriously, that's probably what he did. He went all Egyptian. Why has, okay, that crossover book came out, which I will be reviewing very soon, but that crossover book came out, and why did no one go, wait a second, that's just like Luke and Cronus! Why did no one do that? Like, re seriously, why did no one do that? But I do like that it meant Luke, a hero soul cursed blade shall reap. Oh, that hero part, it really honed in the fact that all demigods are considered heroes because they're the sons and daughters of gods. So they're considered heroes automatically. And having Luke, who has been the bad guy this entire time, actually turn out to be the hero, it was like, to have a Harry Potter reference, they pulled a Snape. They pulled a Snape on this one. That was exactly, like, you did not see it coming. Now, I understood the Snape one a little better, and part of the reason that this book is number three is because when I first read it, I was really confused. I was like, Cursed Blade, why is it cursed? But now I'm, like, blown away by the fact that that blade is cursed because he lied, and he didn't do that. I'm harping on this, so I'll, like, take a step back there. And I just love that about the ending. I love that the whole time it's going through the prophecy. I like that Percy has that, the... Um, Pandora's box, or Pandora's jar, <laughs> rather, the jar, but we call it a box, who, who knows, but I like that he is given that to release hope, and it's like one of those mind-messing things, and I love that Percy is like, to the gods, like, guys, I don't want to be a god, but can you guys just claim your kids? This whole problem wouldn't have happened if you would just claim your kids. Seriously, the gods need to just claim their kids. Now, he probably should have extended that to the Roman side, because then that would have been a lot easier for Frank, but I still love how Frank found out, and we will talk about that when we get- I'm reviewing the other three books I haven't reviewed yet. Otherwise, okay, Rachel, I haven't really touched on her. You know, she's okay for me. Like, not that memorable, honestly. That whole love triangle seems to just be there, but I like having that, like, other side of it, and then her actually becoming the Oracle, it's, it doesn't seem pointless and useless. Like, I brought up in how in Daughter of Smoke and Bone, half the final book was pointless because they were building up for a sequel series that hasn't come yet, or as far as I know, hasn't come yet. And it, it seemed completely pointless. But this book did it perfectly. She was giving, like, helpful information and it was really creepy how she was drawing Luke. And all the monsters around the Empire State Building. I love how everybody came- th this is like the Avengers thing. Okay, like seriously. Like, everybody came in for this one. It was awesome. And then at the end, it was kind of sad and funny when all the gods just came like in ready to fight, but then they just find them there over Luke and they're like, we need a shower for Luke, son of Hermes. And it's like, oh. You act okay, well you could like do a complete 180 of like feeling bad for a character in a book. That's when you know you like can work. That's like awesome and it's amazing. I love that they were able to do that. It you seem so practical and it's so sad and it 
okay, it's like deeper than anything. Like, I could go on about the philosophy forever. I know it's my number three book mainly because it didn't keep the fast paced action. I like the fast paced action that it had and the stakes being raised every time. The stakes were kind of the same the entire time. They were raised and it was interesting and it was suspenseful, but there were always those slow points and I didn't like too many of the dreams and I didn't like how long it took to get started. Some of the fight stuff, it's like, come on, keep moving, get on with it. Some of it was like that, and I there's those parts that I mentioned are really kind of my favorite parts. But I still loved it so much. It this is how you end a series without an epilogue. Okay, like obviously the books that have epilogues and end it, they end them beautifully and lovely. So don't get me wrong, they do end it great, but it's like you wanted fan fiction seriously for this. How we didn't have an epilogue. This one's number three. Like I said. I wanted it to keep going, the dreams seemed a little long, but I loved the heart and the message in it, and I will talk about that later on, the hidden message of the first series, and of, well, every book to follow, that we never really notice and no one ever really talks about, but this book, it is so, you can analyze it forever. Analyze how Luke is feeling when you look at it from Luke's perspective, how he does that complete switch and how he's realizing it. You can even look at it from Hermes perspective because like the entire time Hermes never wanted to give up on Luke. He never wanted to hurt Luke or lose Luke really and he was trying to be like in a weird way a supportive dad it, like not really going after him right, right away for siding with Cronus. It's weird but he, he was trying like the best he could, at least he was trying in a weird, odd way the best he could. And, you know, just even sending Percy to be, and being like, dude, can you just try to get him back? And of course, as we learned from Star Wars, when people say try to get him back, somebody's dying. Okay, in this case it was Luke, which was really sad, and okay, it, it got so dark how he had to kill himself. I, did, I was literally just staring at the book in shock when he did that. I was like, oh my god, why is he, he's do, oh, he's actually gonna do it. That was me the entire time. This book's number, so this book is number three. It's, in, it's like in the middle. I love when it's action, it's action, but you know, just, it got slow, and I did get a little bored with it at times, but I still love it as you can probably tell. Look, it's a paperback now! Magic! <laughs> but yeah, this is how you end a book series. And how you set up for the next one. So, be ready for The Lost Hero. Hope you guys are enjoying Percy Jackson Month. If there's a video that you think I should do, tell me in the comments down below. You're going to be getting a timeline video very soon, and we're also going to be wrapping up our Magnus Chase reviews, and then going right along to the Hunger Games so that we can get ready for the Trials of Apollo because really like I, I'm gonna give you guys a break for Rick Riordan before we go into the Trials of Apollo because you know I'm gonna fangirl so much so much when they come out especially with what was said today go on Twitter and Tumblr to find out but I will be talking about that in my timeline video which is gonna be coming very soon thanks for watching bye Okay, hey guys, so if you guys are still here after the credits, I am sorry that it's taking so long to upload these videos. I am trying desperately to catch up. I am actually uploading them, in my mind, with enough time, which is the day before, but I think I'm going to just have all the videos ready so I can just press publish each morning. So hopefully that will go well and that will go smoothly and I can get the videos up on time every day, but hey, I'm still going to be counting down and each video will count down a day that it's supposed to and I will catch up eventually. So sorry that they're taking so long, sorry that it's being so weird, but that once again that's Percy Jackson month and hey if you have a video that you want me to do, got questions for me about Percy Jackson, I might try to do some Percy Jackson quizzes. And obviously I got some partner stuff still coming along the way. We got some more book reviews to do. We have some hidden messages to uncover. And we have a timeline to figure out that is confirmed. Yeah, it's confirmed. I'm like so excited about that that it is actually confirmed. 
But that's all for now. So, once again, thanks for watching. Bye!